This is the MT Predictor weekly market update for January 21st. And you see I've got the, the Dow weekly on the right here, the S&P, or the, uh, these are the futures contracts, uh, the ES weekly in the middle, and the NASDAQ, or the NQ futures, on the left. And you can see how, you know, these patterns obviously are very, very closely related as they're correlated in many ways. Now the thing that you'll notice uh, in the S&P here is you see the S&P has taken out that prior swing high. That was an important high because it was a wave 5 pattern up and the S&P led or the uh, at least the uh, S&P futures here led the market higher uh, first. Next, we had the Dow futures here. Remember, it had not taken out its wave 5 swing high yet. If I just put the analysis on here. Again, same pattern, same 5 wave pattern up that you saw in the S&P. The Dow was lagging, though, but it did finally close. The Dow future did close above that wave 5 swing high. All right Now, the S&P here has actually got to its next level decision point resistance up there around that 1483 area. The Dow next resistance okay, is just up a little higher, right around 13,690 area. Uh, 13,800 would be right in the middle of that area, nice round number there. All right, so the, the e, uh, S&P went first, the Dow followed later, the NASDAQ is still struggling, you can see here it has failed to take out its uh, if I put the analysis on here again same fa five wave pattern up but you can see the position of the NQ here uh, has not been able to take that wave five high out and instead now is in a potential wave two if I expand this out a little bit more here all right, so you had our five wave pattern up. This ends up being a potential major high because it has not been violated yet. This potentially is a wave one headed into wave two, which we've uh, achieved that area here. Um, and so the danger is for the NQ is that it could go wave three down. Using the tools and the software, let's just project where that wave three down would come. Uh, just above 2100 in the NQ. This is the current contract on the weekly chart. Uh, so that, again, it's two against one here. So you've got two markets wanting to move higher, the NQ lagging. And we saw, if you uh, watched the weekly market update a number of weeks ago, where I pointed out, if I bring in Apple Computer here, that, let's clear this off for a second first, that Apple Computer here, back, uh, this was the week of uh, September, of, uh, uh, let's see, this was, yeah, September of uh, last year. <coughs> and you can see the nice five wave pattern up there in Apple. And as we said, typically after five wave move up, we get a correction back to this wave four decision point, which is here, right around that $500 level in Apple. And you can see, boom, we've achieved that. Close right at $500, nice round support number there. Now, here's the, we call this a decision point area because I expect that Apple will, to some extent, rally off this level here. Uh, the question is, how far is that going to go? We still have, still have strength on the STF here to the downside. Um, so we'll have to watch this. If this does rally and then rolls over and tests this decision point area again, especially if we see a close, Apple close below this uh, decision point area, the low of which is around 460, uh, what is that? I'll call it 470. You know, close a blo a below that area, and then whatever the low of that closing candle is, if that low gets traded below, then the danger is that uh, this area will no longer hold that support and they'll erase this whole five wave pattern up so we go back here's wave one we go to the bottom of wave one take our decision point tool and this becomes your next major support so if this area gives way the danger is we're going to see this area 
in Apple, which would be around the $260 area. All right now, again, we're in support here. Expect some type of rally off of this area here. All right, it may become another five wave pattern up, or like I said, this area gives way and we could see more downside and this whole five wave pattern up can get erased. And obviously that's going to have an impact on the NQ, though less and less the more value that uh, that uh, Apple loses. Uh, but anyway, you can see why uh, the NQ here has not been able to achieve a new high over that, over that wave five high. So keep an eye on that. Uh, we've got two markets. The other thing to watch now is the Dow Cash. If I just bring in the Dow Cash, the Dow Cash here has not. Uh, it's traded. Let's see the the high peak here. Again, this is uh, Dow Cash. Same thing. Same five wave pattern there. The high uh, peak there at thirteen thousand six sixty. We'll call it six sixty two. Uh, and 649, uh, 650 is the uh, high uh, weekly close. I'm sorry, the high weekly uh, price in the Dow Cash here. So uh, 662 to uh, uh, 649. So the Dow Cash has not followed with you know the futures yet with a new high. All right, so that we got to see that uh, as well. But we've got two of the futures markets, the Dow now uh, corroborating the S&P's new high. Now the S&P is in resistance here, so um, we'll see if the uh, the Dow futures can make that last move, you know, uh, into its DP resistance, and then we'll have to watch and see what happens there in the NQ. Uh, let's just look at well, let's just look at. Uh, oil here again the weekly chart just looking at bigger picture stuff here again we talked about the the fact that uh, oil has been trading in this kind of eighty dollar to hundred hundred and ten dollar level and it's been kind of bouncing around for weeks and weeks um, we did have this signal come in this the TS1 buy signal which is a standard trade setup because the STF is neutral meaning you can go long or short here and it was uh, didn't quite get down to the eighty dollar support area, but um, it has made a move off of the uh, the little ABC correction here. You see the target there uh, just above a hundred dollars in oil. Um, at this point, if you are long oil, you can have your stop to uh, to break even that eighty seven forty seven area. And so you're in a risk-free trade at that point. See if they can finish that off. So $100 will be resistance. We've we've seen that before. And then the uh, 110 um, on the extreme, we've seen 120. But you see that immediately got smacked back down to that uh, inside the $110 level. So uh, we'll see how this finishes out. And keep an eye on that. And then I was going to point out. Let's just look at uh, gold just from a little different perspective on what we had in gold here. So here's the beginning of the kind of the gold bull market 2001 and you can see in 2002 we made a new high. 2003 brought a new high. 2004 a new high. 2005 uh, a new high. Again a new high in 2006, 2007, 2008 all new highs. 2009, 2010, 2011 all brought new highs till we get to 2012 here and no new high in 2012. All right, so something to take note of. Uh, the interesting thing, and I really, the reason I pointed out here is because the fact that, uh, you know, in 2012, Central banks of the world were net buyers of gold, um, which you know they haven't been over the last you know 20 years or so, and uh, also have you know the uh, uh, bullion market, the uh, you know your silver eagles, uh, you know just recently got a an email saying the 2013 uh, uh, silver gold and silver eagles were basically selling out, but yet. 
not reflected in any new high in 2012. And so just thought that was interesting. Uh, every year in this bull market, we've gotten a new high, uh, but we failed to in 2012. Keep an eye on that. I mean, this is still obviously an uptrend. Uh, we've seen the 250 uh, period moving averages on there. And this is just a drop below the 50 period above the 200 period, um, which has been uh, over the last uh, 10 years, 12 years now, uh, a good buying opportunity. But we'll see. Uh, first year that we haven't seen since this bull market began a new high. So keep your eye on that. And well, let's just uh, we'll leave it there. We'll come back and look at some other stuff next week. Um, hopefully that's been helpful and I'll keep it uh, shorter. Hope you enjoyed the holiday here in the States and uh, hope you have a good trading week. We'll see you back next uh, Sunday evening.